From gorillas in the mist to huskies in the rain as the Wildcats travel down to Houston. I'm Kara Stutzman. And I'm Grant Boone. The Wildcats aren't in Kansas anymore. We'll look back at that loss to Pittsburgh State last week and preview tonight's game against Houston Baptist. It's the Ken Collum Show right now. <laughs> Welcome into Studio D1 for Week 7 of the Ken Collum Show. I'm Grant Boone, voice of the Wildcats, joined by ACU senior broadcast journalism major Kara Stutzman and ACU head football coach Ken Collins. Coach, tonight, ACU and Houston Baptist, another first-time opponent, going to be a big tailgate party down there about 5.30. Rumor has it, one of your former players <laughs> who's busy on Sundays, Daniel Manning of the Texans, may make a cameo appearance at the tailgate. It'll be good to see him and the other alumni there, won't it? Oh, it will. It'll be awesome. And you're not, uh, you're pretty good at uh, drumming up some rumors, so that's good. But that's, there's probably a little bit of truth to that one, and yeah. I look forward to seeing Daniel. He's a great guy. We might see Daryl Richardson as well. His right. Rams take on the Texans the next day. That's right. And, and uh, you know, both of them are going to hook it up, so it'll be good. It'll be, be interesting to see if Danielle tackles uh, Daryl in the open field. That would be it's fun always to interesting. See. Yeah. yeah. Well, from NFL to college, last week we played Pitt State, and even with the loss, we were still able to hold them to only 28 points, which is about half of what they normally score per game this season. What did you tell your players about maybe some of the mishaps um, and even some of the good things that happened so that they can take that into this weekend's game? Sure. When, when, you, when you play a tough game, we knew that when we rolled in there to, to Pitt State. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a great I environment. You got to go home. You're pretty, pretty fired up about that. <laughs> we stayed in Joplin not too far from uh, what, Carl Junction, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Uh, but after the game or during the course of the game, you can see – kind of the ebbs and flows of the game. Two quality teams getting after it. One probably a little more physical than the other, meaning them. They, uh, I think they pushed us around a little bit. Uh, our defense, I thought, played pretty well. Uh, you know, at times it doesn't look like it, but you gotta remember, that's a good offense. When you're playing a good outfit, people are gonna make yards, people are gonna score a little bit. But that's a, that's a scoring machine they've got up there, at least the first four games. And I thought our guys did well. I thought we tackled pretty good. Uh, but, but you know what? We didn't make, obviously, a, enough plays. We, we let a couple of big plays happen, which set up scores. Every one of our scoring drives this year, have a, we give up a gain of at least 25 yards mm -hmm. on those. And, and it's, it's just uh, it's hard for our guys to overcome that. But we did some good things. We did some good things offensively. Uh, I just feel like at this point in our book that we're writing in, in the 2013 season, there are three chapters in a row now where we're just kind of all over the place. I don't know that we're really telling a story. It's just inconsistency and and uh, when you play good teams, you're, uh, there's a chance you're not going to win those games. Let's take a look at how it happened with a look at the highlights of ACU's 28-20 loss to Pittsburgh State last Saturday. Here is Ken Collum Show contributor Matt Sloan. ACU entered another hostile environment Saturday looking to claim a victory in the jungle against the Pitt State Gorillas. The Wildcat defense came out on fire, delivering big hits. Angel Lopez blew up several players, and Tyler Choppa even scored a touchdown early. But Pitt State responded when Jeff Siebold found the end zone on his first of three scores. Then, after a Pitt State field goal, the Gorillas were at it again, using their patented running game to find the end zone and take a 17-7 lead in the second quarter. Then stud wideout Taylor Gabriel took over the game. The Wildcats fed him the ball all drive. He shook off tackles and took his team into the red zone. Then Gabriel finished what he started with a nice toe tap to earn six points and tighten up the Gorilla lead going into halftime. The third quarter was all Gorilla. The team would score 11 in a row with a field goal and a Seabold third touchdown lead giving Pitt State a 14-point lead heading into the fourth quarter. But Daryl Cantu Harkless would backpedal into the end zone and put a scare in the Gorillas, but ACU would just run out of time. 
head coach Ken Combs helped put things in perspective after the tough loss. But a couple of things that I that I do know that I know that I'm great. I'm gravely disappointed. And I mean, we lost our third game in a row. I don't know that I've ever lost three games. In a row. Um, I know that I hurt, and I'm very disappointed. But I also know that I love every one of those guys, and they've got to know that. And they, they are, they're not defined by this week or the last three weeks. Uh, they're defined by what they do every single day as a man, and then and they're learning, and we're all learning with them. Thanks, Matt. When we come back on the Ken Collins Show, we'll take a closer look at last week, including the play of the game. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show. ACU falls to Pittsburgh State 28 to 20 last week up in Pittsburgh, Kansas. It was homecoming there. They've got 20,000 people in the city of Pittsburgh, Kansas. They had about 15,000 on the property. Uh, the stadium is, I mean, it's it's impressive, and you told me that there were at least a couple of moments where the crowd was so noisy it may have affected your team on offense. Sure. You know, every, every Thursday we, we practice crowd noise. Well, there's a couple ways to do that. You either get loud music or loud crowd noise over speakers, or you just whisper. And our guys whisper all day on Thursday, and, and there's no talking. It's only whisper. So it kind of makes you hone in. It kind of it becomes... I, almost like, hey, I can't hear one way or the other whether a guy's whispering or what. So our first drive, you know, we're, we'd look a little bit dysfunctional because of the crowd noise, mm -hmm. and, uh, and obviously I did not have them ready for that particular situation. I think, it was just the, I think it was just the quarterback in the center, but, you know, that almost cost us in the first drive. Very first play of the game, you go with the trick play. You, you designed a, a flea flicker, and uh, there was – some moisture on the field that day because of some rain earlier in the day. Several players slipped. Daryl Cantu Harkless turns to wheel the ball back to John David Baker, and he slips and falls and can't get the ball back to J.D. Uh, it, it, that's a play I haven't seen called in a few years. You bring it out just on special occasions. You were trying to hit something early, right? Oh, yeah. Well, they're, they're set up to stop the run, so we're going to give them a run set, two tight ends, and and uh, and show him run and it the him slipping had nothing to do with the moisture. The guy just he was yeah. excited. He just had a good kickoff return. Yeah. And uh, just lost his footing. And that happens one time. Some, sometimes when you're when you're so hyped and you're you're so ready, it, sometimes you're a little heavy, heavy, little heavy on discipline. That's what or heavy on passion is what we talk about. So. In fact, we saw a play on Monday night as the Falcons were playing the Jets. One of your former players, Clyde J, uh, Clyde Gates. Late in the game, he catches a pass, and, you know, if he catches it cleanly and, and turns up field, he's got a touchdown, his feet come out from under. I mean, that, right. that can happen That's regardless right. of the foot. That's right. It, it, it does, and it has nothing to do with skill level because you, you get NFL guys that do that. You see high sure. school guys that do that. And sometimes your, your passion is going a little bit hot, and, and you lose sense of, of just where your feet are. It's a natural thing, and it's, just, it's hard. It's a really hard thing. Well, each team had the ball a couple of times, unable to score. Your team got on the board first, thanks to our play of the game. In fact, let's take a look at it. For the second time this season, Tyler Choppa picks off a pass and takes it all the way back. Uh, it looked like he saw what was coming. He told me after the game it was good coaching. Well, uh, Choppa's a humble guy. I mean, he's, he's a great guy. But you can see right there, he is very instinctive. Uh, so he knew, you know, our guys had him schooled up, what to look for. He knows the intentions of the quarterback as far as his body language, knows what he's trying to do with the ball. And the quarterback gave him a high ball out there, so he went up and got it. And, uh, of course, he's got enough speed and, and uh, nobody was around, so he walks into the end zone. Well, you said when you recruited him a couple of years ago out of San Antonio Warren High School that he was a guy with ball skills and a guy who had the ability and, and the tendency to take it back the other way. This is his second pick six. He also had John Brown, All-America wide receiver, uh, senior there at Pitt State, for most of the day, held him to three catches in 18 yards. That doesn't happen very often. No, that, that, that rarely happens because John Brown can play. He's, yeah. he's a dandy. And uh, for us to hold him to three catches, however that happened, is, sure. a, is a really good deal. I think, and I think part of, the, part of the situation that helped us was the pick six early. You know, you, mm -hmm. you take a step back as far as a quarterback and figure, okay, what can I throw? Do I want even want to throw the ball outside for a while? Let's keep it in the middle of the field. It just helps take uh, take some of their aggressiveness as far as throwing the ball. It takes it away from them. Caleb Withrow also had John Brown on a number of plays on Saturday. I thought also did a good job. That's right. 
Uh, they do have a prolific offense. They've got uh, Anthony Abinoha, really good quarterback, who's a dual threat. Uh, like They like to use the zone read with him. He had some good moments in spite of that pick six. And they have a really good running back, Jeff Siebold, who got you for three touchdowns and ran for just over 100 yards. And yet, Coach, as, I was, as the game was going on, it seemed like, and I don't know why, it seemed like they were winning by m more than they really were. You look up fourth quarter, you, your team still had a chance to win. Overall, defensively, you give up 380-some-odd yards and 28 points to a, a prolific offense. Big picture, how did your defense play? Well, our defense, and Coach Doolin knows this, is this is, I say this all the time, it's not like NASCAR. You don't get extra bonus points for holding people yeah. to, to you sure. know, less than 10 first downs or a certain amount of yards. It's, hey, keep them out of the end zone. Mm. And for the most part, our guys did that. And uh, so I was, I was proud of them. I thought we tackled really well. Uh, sometimes I don't know how smart we played, but, but I, thought, I thought defensively we played, uh, played fairly well. Hard to hold a good out offense down for 60 minutes. They had two chunk plays on you both in the passing game. Otherwise, your team, uh, I thought, played admirably. On the offensive side of the football, I, I know that after some record-setting nights like he's had earlier in the year against outmatched opponents, it'll be hard to say this with a straight face, but I thought John David Baker may have played his best game of the season, given the opponent, given the duress he was under. Sure. I thought John David did an admirable job. I mean, he, that, I, after watching that game, he competed like a fierce competitor. He was constantly under pressure. There were a couple of matchups that they would get us into that were not real favorable for us. And, uh, you know, therefore, John David's going to have to, you know, throw with some heat on him. And took a lot of shots. And... We talk about all the time, you got to look down the gun barrel. You got to look down the barrel as a quarterback against a good defense, and you got to make throws. And for the most part, he did. He protected the ball, had one uh, interception, which was a tip ball. And uh, for the most part, the guy competed, protected the ball, ran the ball when he should. He ran the ball a little bit more than he probably should have. Probably should have got the ball out a couple more times where he, or, you know, he took, he took a couple of extra hits that he probably shouldn't have. But, uh, but I, thought, I thought he played well. And the, the, the thing that really bothers you when you watch the game, we had five different chances where we had receivers running wide open, mm. and we were one for five on, on hitting those receivers, whether it was a, uh, you know, one was a drop, three were, and the other three were uh, pass protection issues. So we just got to get, get that cleaned up because you can't do that against a good defense. Yeah, and he'll have another chance tonight as he takes on Houston Baptist at BBVA Compass Stadium. We'll preview that game a little bit later on, but first, when we come back, it's up to the JMC Network Sports Desk to take a look at what's happening around the rest of the ACU sports world. And as we go to break, take a look at some of the scores from around the Southland Conference last week. Keep it here on the Ken Collins Show. Welcome back to the King Column Show. This year, football practice is more rhythm and beat. That could be attributed to Coach Columns playing music during practice. Take a look and see what I mean. Music is, 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 a, is a fundamental thing in life. I mean, everybody likes some sort of music. Uh, and. It, I mean, it, at times it'll take your mind off of some kind of funk that you might be in, and at times it may help you focus. And a lot of times, what, what music does, if you, hit, if you hit the right song, then it does something to you. And so it is with practice, and, and it's not some kind of hokey deal, but it's just, you know what, hey, let's listen to a little bit of music. A lot of, a lot of times people do that to, to study or to help them focus, or just for entertainment. I don't think we lose a bit of focus, and in fact, uh, in fact I think it's a really good deal. All the songs are on Nathan Young's iPod. Uh, they are simply because he is better at iTunes. He's pretty good at what he does as far as the iTunes. He can make a transition. I can give him five songs and he'll have it on there in no time. Yeah, we just, what we did was we looked at, uh, at different stuff, you know, trying to be contemporary and trying to fit into what uh, ACU is about. Um, and there's a fine line in there somewhere. And, uh, you know, stuff that our guys enjoy listening to. Um, but stuff that's very appropriate uh, for what we're doing. So, um, you know, we've, we've got about 50 songs roughly on here that, that we go through. And, um, you know, and, and, and sometimes guys are like, hey, can we get this or can we get this? And sometimes Coach Collins throws his, you know, 80s 
80s stuff into it, and you know we enjoy that too. So, um, but but we get a little bit of everything in here, and I mean, you know we've got some country, we've got some rap, we've got some um, Imagine Dragons, we've got some Justin Timberlake. I mean, you name it, we've got it. The music actually just adds excitement, and uh, you know it's the middle of the season. Practice is starting to get a little gloomy and stuff like that, so it just kind of brings everybody's spirits up and gets us in the mood to practice. Some of the songs Coach picks are a little questionable. He likes his early 90s slow jams type of little hip hop stuff, but well, you know, it's better than nothing, so I'll take it. <laughs> The players might not agree with Coach on the genre, but they do agree that music and practice are a good mix. The football team isn't the only ones mixing it up. ACU Volleyball was home on Thursday night against Lamar University. With that story and more, here's Matt Sloan and Sharon Murawski. Welcome to the JMC Network Sportscast. I'm Sharon Murawski. The ACU soccer team had their home unbeaten streak snapped last week against Oral Roberts University. Here's the highlights. ACU Soccer suffered their first home loss against Oral Roberts University this past Sunday. The score remained 0-0 throughout the first half. Freshman goalkeeper Kelsey Dombrowski kept the Wildcats in the game with a season-high nine saves. ACU set off 16 shots, but Oral Roberts' defense applied pressure throughout the entire match. Oral Roberts got one goal in the 57th minute of the game, but the Wildcats were never able to respond despite aggressive attempts from Andrea Carpenter and Natalie Throneberry. The ACU tennis team's transition into Division I has gone well, and they're playing well in all of their tournaments. Assistant coach John Walker is excited for the fall season regionals next week. For our tennis program, yeah, um, we're coming up on regionals. Um, the men play in Waco and uh, the women will be at TCU at Fort Worth. So uh, we're looking forward to that. I mean, we're last week kind of had a week off after several weeks of, of being out of town, playing other tournaments. And uh, uh, now we're back on the court, practicing a lot this week and next week, getting ready for regionals. ACU football will take on Houston Baptist in the Wildcats' fourth consecutive road game this weekend. Senior offensive lineman Josh Perez talked about how the team is keeping their spirits up and how they look forward to continuing the season. Like Coach said, the best medicine for us to have is a great win. And after three tough losses, um, we hope to go out there um, in Houston this weekend and come out with a big win and hopefully just get our spirits back up and, and get rolling again. The volleyball team looked to get back to winning ways at home in Moody Coliseum against Lamar Thursday night. Head coach Kellen Mock talked a little bit about the performance after the match. We weren't able to stop their middles hardly at all because they were hitting even higher than we were able to jump. And so, um, you know, it was a little tough for us tonight because they did a, a really good job of winning our block. And our block is one of the best parts of our game. And so not having our block score points for us was difficult. You know, we've, we've spent a lot of time this week working on our offense. We've not been a very strong offensive team. And I saw a lot of production from three of our freshmen. Um, Lexi Mercier has been doing a good job for us all season long. But tonight was really good. She, I think she was one of the leaders in kills. Mm -hmm. um, and then Dorothy Swanson and Erica Lambert both. Erica had the best game she's had all season um, and, and really has provided an offensive threat for us. And we've not had that this year. For Matthew Sloan, I'm Sharon Murawski. Thanks for watching the JMC Network Sportscast. Join us again next week. When we get back, we'll take a look at what is waiting for the Cats in Houston and look at the other teams in the Southland Conference. So stay with us on the Ken Collins Show. Back here on the Ken Collins Show, take a look at some of the scheduled action today around the Southland Conference, including Lamar at Sam Houston State. As conference play begins for most teams in the Southland, Coach, you got to see Sam Houston last year in that FCS title game. That's a tough crew down there in Huntsville. Yeah, they've good, they're good. Uh, Coach Fritz does a really good job down there, and they're they're using that to carry them forward this year. They've got some good players. You got a great running back, great quarterback that can manage anything, and and uh, they're doing really well. Coach, you play Houston Baptist tonight, just their fourth game of their entire football career. You have no idea what you're walking into. Really, no one has any idea what they're walking into in that stadium. How does that affect how you go into tonight's game? Well, the bottom line is when, you, when you're reflecting on your product, which is the entire football program as a head coach, when you feel like things are not functioning as well as they should, you're not quite as worried about 
who you're playing. You're more concerned about our product on the field and how we're doing things and are we getting the best out of our guys and are we putting them in the, in the best position to be successful. Uh, so that's the number one thing. Number two thing is, because I don't know this about, the, uh, about number one, is if we go out and play well, play clean, I say this all the time, and play with passion and discipline, I like our chances against anybody that we've played and anybody that we will play. Now, Houston Baptist, we don't know much about them. Uh, in, in, in fact, their coaches are still, you know, after three games of ever playing games with those guys, are still learning about their players. How do they react in certain game situations? How do they react to getting scored on twice and, and, and not answering on offense? So they're, they've got some issues themselves that they're working through, and their players are getting to know each other. So we're just, we're just wanting to go in and play good, solid football. And whether it's Houston Baptist or anybody else, uh, we just want to go play well and put our best foot forward. It just happens to be, you know what, we're going to Houston, and uh, which is going to be pretty cool. That's a, it should be a great atmosphere and a great venue. BBVA Compass Stadium is where you're going to play. It's the home of the Houston Dynamo, not unlike the game you played up in Frisco when you were playing uh, Tarleton State, uh, their home of FC Dallas. Uh, you've had three games against some pretty difficult opponents. I mean, you think about you lost to two Division II teams that haven't lost a game yet this season. You lost to an FCS team that went to the FCS playoffs last year. Uh, is there any temptation for your guys, even though they've lost three straight games, to look at this week's opponent and say to themselves, well, we got this one because this is a first-year team? Any temptation there? I certainly hope not. And I, th Would you be worried about that <laughs> under other circumstances? No, because, because I know what I, our, our feeling after our third loss in a row, which hasn't happened around here since 05, and you just don't lose that many games at ACU. What I told them in the, in the locker room is, hey, guys, reflect on You remember when I told you we were 3-0 and at one point, and now we're 0-3 in our last three games? And that's very humbling. The game of football is so humbling as a coach and as a player. It's absolutely crazy. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. And the way we're practicing, I, and sometimes it shows up, through, uh, you can tell their approach is wrong uh, throughout the week. We're having a great week of practice. It's okay. upbeat, great weather. I, I fully expect to play well. Uh, give me a quick health update. I know Justin Stevens didn't play last week because of a, of a knee issue. How about this week? For him and yeah, Justin will be back. Okay. Uh, Shikandrick West will be a game time uh, decision. He tweaked his hamstring uh, last week. Jonathan Parker, same thing, rolled his ankle up. Uh, so I don't, I don't know that we'll have both of those guys. We might, but they won't be, certainly won't be 100%. So uh, those are the main issues, and, uh, you know, we're shuffling people around and trying to, get our, trying to get our guys in there. Should be a lot of fun tonight. Tailgate party before the game. Be there, be square. 5.30 there on the property at BBVA Compass Stadium. And then the game time at 7.30 p.m. Lance Fleming and I will have the radio broadcast beginning at 7 on the ACU Sports Network. Don't forget the Ken Column Show is here every week on K-Texas and as well on ACUOptimist.com. For Kara Stutzman and for the Coach Ken Columns, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching the Ken Column Show. We'll see you right here next week.